What is up, everybody? We're going to go ahead and break down an A-plus trade in this video. And we're going to look at it on a chart, how I found it, why I was so committed to taking it, how it panned out. And then we'll actually look at the order flow around the trade because this entry is a little unique compared to the rest of the styles of trades I take. So if you're familiar with the channel, typically I'm getting in and out of trades relatively quickly. This trade, I had to end up putting it on and willing to just take a bigger stop on it because the volatility was not there, but the expected value of the trade actually running relatively far was there. So the trades we're gonna be looking at are these two here, minus 200, and then the obvious win at 3,200. And that has been scaled up on eight lots. So as you can see before, uh, the actual setup I was trading lower lottage of four two one four But once the big trade started to set up we started fighting for it many times actually one two three four five six times uh, We did get in it and make a thousand on it, but that was an accidental scale out So I did fat finger that and uh, made a, a K on it the, the trade ended up coming back and then we had to re-engage it and as you can see from this eight lot down this re-engage, I took on way more risk than I normally would on trades. Again, you'll see that in the order flow when we get to that section. The first thing we're gonna do though, is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I found this on the charts and a little bit more about finding bigger setups. Okay guys, as you can see, there is this, there's just a mess of shit on here. So let's kind of explain what's going on. And I do have really bad allergies, so I'm probably, my voice sounds a little different, and I'm going to keep rubbing my nose. So, uh, I swear I didn't put anything in there, okay? But anyways, yellow tails will be RTH sessions. So, when you see these yellow tail sessions, and this is a 10-minute chart, by the way. This is from the regular trading hours, the market open, all the way till the market close. So think of a yellow tail as the sun is rising, the sun is shining at its brightest. Orange tail will be overnight, sunset, night session. The sun is setting, it puts an orange hue in the sky. This is from the market close to when the market opens. So overnight sessions typically are going to span many more minutes, many more hours than a regular trading hour. But that's just so we know, you know, what are the different profiles. So anytime you see a yellow tail, that is a different day. So if we zoom out a bit, we have a very large profile here. So this profile starts from this down push in the price action. You guys can't see it, but right there, it starts on that down push. Uh, and I drew the profile as far as possible. I believe it actually uh, ends somewhere right in this section. Uh, on this Friday, January the 6th. So this profile is covering many days. Many, 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 many days. So I would say over the course of many days, nine, about nine days we were pretty much going sideways yes there were big moves intraday but for nine days we were going sideways so what you guys need to understand is the longer you go sideways the more you chop the more extreme the move is going to be once it finally cracks so as you can see up here we have a value zone high which is where a majority of the volume has traded on this composite so let's zoom in here. So on uh, this specific RTH session, we didn't break out of it, but then the overnight did and it immediately came in. So if we zoom in more, right on these prices, 72.50 roughly, we tried, we, we, we went down, went, back up attempted the break couldn't break couldn't break uh then the next day couldn't break 
The next day we did break and we chopped a little bit, but just above. And then it ended up going all the way back down again. Again, the overnight session is going to blow it out. But as soon as we open up in this RTH session, it just shoves right back down, all the way back to the other side. Okay? And then this section, we start to break, but we're not running. There should be a bigger move up than the next RTH session, all the way on the other side. Then finally, we break and we go. Okay? So I was eyeballing this trade, and I had attempted to play the breakout on the 29th, couldn't get it to work. Uh, I attempted to play, I may have attempted the breakout on the fourth, I can't remember. But moral of the story is we did not break this curve and we did not sustain a breakout beyond the curve, okay? So the more a setup fails, the more extreme the move is gonna be. So I didn't really get the breakout. I mean, I took a lot of great trades throughout these days and shit, but to, to get the actual breakout and to really squeeze a relatively large trade, I just didn't get it. So, and I didn't get it on, the, on Friday either. I mean, it had busted out and it kept going. But what I did get was something else a little interesting. So if we zoom in, up here, I drew a curve. I'm going to erase a bunch of stuff. So I got rid of all the RTH and overnight profiles. So from this price action in this section, where it's going up and down, up and down, I drew a curve. We have a relatively nice curve here. Now we'll go back to the composite, which is down here. This is, again, the big one that spans, you know, several days. So there's another smaller curve up here. We should be getting into that and we should trade all the way across to the other side of value zone. We fail in the overnight session twice. Test it, pull back, test it. So two fails, right? And then we go back down and we're down there forever. And we'll keep going. Again, another attempt, fail. Another attempt, so that, that would be test three. Test four, we don't go all the way across. We do not get all the way across. Test five, we do not get all the way across. That is five tests of price action not able to get through. Now, part of my thinking is this larger curve behind my head is pulling the trade back in. And we're just not able to, to get all the way across. Well, finally, right here, we're exploding out and then we bang off the bottom right here, come in, and then we finally get the damn thing to go all the way across, in which I end up getting into the trade while I fight for it, and then we run it. Um, so let's take a look at what that kind of looked like on a smaller time frame, because again, this is gonna be a 10 minute. So that bottom line is going to be at the price of like 900 even, which is going to be kind of, you know, that's a psych number. So we'll go to 900 evens. Okay, so this is a 30 second chart. This is what I'm looking at most of the time. Here's 900 even right here. So if you guys remember the P&L, there was the one trade where I was up $1,000. This would be the entry. Again, the trade ends up coming back. We had accidentally cut it kind of near the high, which helps. But then we end up realizing, you know, we need to get into this. The volatility is low. I can't keep fighting for it because a tick loss on eight contracts is 100 bucks. And at the time I was attempting to get into the trade, I was up roughly 4K, somewhere in that area. Those hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollar losses, which is like three ticks, they're gonna add up very quickly. So if we look at the P and L again, this is literally a two tick loss, a two tick loss, a two tick loss. So they add up really quickly, and before you know it, you're down six hundred or a thousand on eight lots really fast. So at some point, I'm like, I cannot fight because this is not the type of environment where I could actually fight 
into this trade. The, the volatility is not existed. Plus, the fact that the major composite failed as many times as it did on the breakout and that smaller profile, which we'll go look at, failed five times. So let's go look at those again. Again, this, this smaller profile failed five different fucking tests. Okay. This one all the way over here. And we could never just break this major composite. So you kind of have two things going on right here. You have a higher time frame area that breaks. And then we also have a smaller value zone, which is just a different setup entirely from this composite. And we're leveraging the higher time frame breaking out, which I didn't get into. I mean, there were times where I would get into certain things, but they were more scalps or anything. I could never hold it. But we're leveraging this higher time frame composite that, again, spans many fucking days, like nine days or some shit, to get into a smaller curve that never fully broke. And it tested it five times with major pullbacks on almost every test. It had very large pullbacks, bigger pullbacks, more time spanning, that is making the expected value better. Guys, if you've not seen my video on expected value, I highly recommend it. And then also another video I recommend is on another A plus trade where I break it down. And expected value and so expected value and, and building context and narrative is really key to these bigger trades for my uh, style of trading. So now we kind of have the narrative, the context. Th this is why I believe it's going to go up. Now, I did swing some options contracts um, on these breakouts. And I made a 200 and something dollars. And I'm only, I'm getting back in the options, swinging a SPY contract, uh, one SPY contract. So, you know, I took a year of not trading options. Now I'm trying to, swing my bigger picture ideas on options so uh, that's another video for another time but yes the context is there the expected value is there the more a trade fails the more a setup fails in my opinion the more prime it is the more extreme the move is the more you should size up this is one of those trades where i should have sized up 20 lots but currently i don't have the balls to do that so I was pretty confident in it. Yes, it went nine ticks against me, and that would have really made my asshole pucker. But uh, a big goal of mine in 2023 is to really identify these A-plus trades and really slam them with a large amount of size. And I'm getting better at it. Uh, throughout the year 2022, I've been experimenting with uh, sizing on trades i used to just trade a fixed amount of contracts so i started experimenting with sizing a trades and while that's a skill in itself i've been getting better so let's go back to the rth session that 900 i'll go ahead and drop a line where that 900 is because that's exactly basically where that value zone starts so 900 is where it starts let's go to the upper edge the upper edge where I was initially targeting was going to be, what was it? 10, 10 even. So uh, let's drop a uh, another line on 10 even. So that's about a 10 point trade, which for me is relatively good. What was interesting about the setup though, is it has this yellow box, which this yellow box in its own right is a completely different fucking setup. So the value zone here is a different setup, but this yellow box is flanking another setup. So I know that if it can get up into this yellow box, it could run further than 10 and hit the other edge of the yellow box. I'm not sure if I scale uh, all the way up near this edge, uh, to be honest with you, uh, but uh, I might might have got close to it i think i get out at that 12 i don't even know if this yellow box is accurate to be honest with you uh but anyways so again we fight our way into it 
make a thousand bucks on this move up it, it it cracks and you can see this pink line is getting absolutely violated where it is just chopping let's get rid of some of these other lines that don't matter so th this pink line is getting absolutely violated chopped so like getting into it was not easy i believe we re-enter somewhere in this section and that's where we just end up fucking holding it so let's go ahead and actually look at the footage so as you can see uh there's the 900 is right here this is where we was originally looking i actually scaled up here now it's starting to come back uh there's other things that are marked on the dom there's a bunch of slipping that's been happening in this section so i do believe that if the trade can come back up until the 175 there might be a momentum pop um so let's go ahead and watch the footage so we're pulling back to the 900 see i wrote val this is for value area low so this is exactly where i know that um that level is that pink line i drew on the chart which is again the value zone low of that upper profile that failed five times so we're pulling back here really not the best of volume coming in as you can see it's 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 not that great of volatility yes you have volume picking up in this section but again this is a quad zero this is a century number so there's a bit of a pop right there try to chase it from the back side cancel the order stalling again we're gonna re-engage it because it did j just not getting fucking filled fast enough taking forever to get fucking fully fucking filled too there you go so uh, again it pulls back to the value area low so it's like okay this actually might be odd we might hit these slips oh shit it, it's not it's just that what's going on here there's no momentum it's starting to pull back so i'm trying to use an approach where I'm, I'm just trying to fight my way into it aggressively and th the volatility just simply isn't there so i'm like you know what i'm going to re-engage and what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna let it hit my fucking stop okay and the stop is 12 ticks which you, it's obviously not there i will be placing it i mean there is a stop it's a lot further down so what i opt out to do is I'm, I'm like you know what i need to just sit in this trade and let it breathe there is absolutely no volatility this trade has such high expected value on it there is such an extreme probability that it will work and it will work well and it will work in the target because of all the other things i've explained so this ends up panning out forever so we're going to speed it up two by speed but i just want to show you the patience on sitting in this fucking thing right so as you can see it is literally just chopping and this is two times speed so we're gonna place the stop if we get whacked on it there's still a lot of potential reward on the table <laughs> And unfortunately, I do cut this trade a little too early, in my opinion. But there's just so much chopping on it. So now it's, it's you know, I believe these quad zeros will pull the trade back in because these century prices chop. So I even though it's going against me, yes, it sucks. But it should pull it back in comes up to me and it pivots right under my entry um i do consider re-entering like cutting it for a break even and re-entering at some point which i didn't do i don't do which really was the right call and then here's those 175s i do believe that at some point they can actually push which they're starting to fail that is fine because on an, another test they actually finally go and then the trade comes back to me really quickly but this is barely fucking chopping this is very very bad volatility 
very bad volatility. This this aggressive getting in and out style of trading is not going to fucking work. Uh, the best thing to do in these environments is find very high probability setups. And again, the more a setup fails, the more prime it is, in my opinion, to actually work. The first time a setup, any of my setups uh, come into play, typically they'll fail. So I'm going to be more skeptical about that. But if they fail three times, then I'm going to be more lenient on letting the trade breathe a bit. So as you can see, it's coming back down, getting very close to that stop. But that's a $1,200 stop. By the way, very expensive, but as you can see, when you trade more size, you do have more potential upside. So that's just part of the game when you trade more size. So we throw down an anchored view app right here. Uh, and this is for me to just kind of look at things. I've been experimenting with anchored view app. And in the last video, you guys probably remember the nicey tick. I kind of got rid of that. Getting very fucking close uh, to that stop. So I guess it what Ted ticks against me. Um, but what's interesting is there's actually a range in this section. You can kind of see it up here. So it's to me, it's ranging. I'm at the. I bought the top of this range, but at the time it wasn't the top of a range. Back up the quad zeros, just letting it breathe. And, and this is a style of entry you guys don't really see on this channel. You see more aggression. But again, this is a this is a different type of setup. This is a whole different ball game in this section. So I'm just marking out little areas up here. Um, it's it's same concept. So let's let's kind of zoom in real quick. Okay, now that we zoomed in, you can see. Uh, you know, I I have an anchored view app. There's a first deviation. The price action pivots it. It pivots it again. It pivots the actual anchored view app band in the middle, and then it now it's pivoting the. Uh, the lower band so same same sort of concept as the higher time frame the more it fails right here the more likely it's going to actually blow through and go so you guys kind of know um but let's zoom back out and continue to play it so uh it's chopping the quads which is to be expected here Probably a bit early on the trade, but this is a trade that I just couldn't let go that, I, you know, I needed to get into this fucking thing because I've been waiting for it for a long time, many days. Again, this is at a two times speed, so it's it's a lot more fucking slow than what you're seeing here. So my belief is that if it can press 175, it should shoot up and not come back. There it is. And then this 175, if it can push 175, it should go to threes. But that's based off of another concept called slipping. Yes, it, it does come back a bit, which is fine. Again, hitting the 175s. There should be a qu quicker shove to three. And I've not watched this footage uh, since yesterday. Well, I haven't even watched the fucking footage. So... If I had missed this trade, I believe that 175 would have been a good cue. Uh, now, it could hit this 3 and pull back briefly to 175s, if I'm not mistaken. Is this thing still going fast? Yes, it is. So, let's keep watching it. She's pushing. Again, just patience. Patience. Right, we we were you can't panic cut this fucking trade. 
Because if we would have let it stop that, it doesn't even move 12 ticks in my fucking favor. Yeah, when, when you take these big trades like this, you got to fucking just let it push. It really depends on what big trade it is, though. Because um, certain, I mean, there's several different styles of trades. There's scalp trades, which they need to work right away. There's point to points, and then there's these bigger intraday swings like this now i wouldn't really consider this an intraday swing it's more of a point the point i'm looking for it to hit a specific target as you can see there are the green um areas so i'm looking at tits yes it shits back but that's fine because these hard shits in the es typically get reclaimed and that's just exactly what's happening right here. So let's start looking at the targets. So the first scale is going to be 0625 because that is half. That is basically halfway through uh, that uh, profile. I don't like the way it popped up. It came back in real quick, but it should roll back up. I believe we're about to take a scale now. Let's fast forward sub. Here we go. And we only take off two because I set, sit this fucking trade forever. I'm like, I need to get something for this. So we take off two of the eight and then we're left with six. Not sure if that size did come off yet. I believe it, it comes off at 106. So as you can see, it's hitting up here and it's it's pulling back and shit. This is where I get ready to take some off because this is just dicking around quite a bit and it's slamming. Uh, and we're going to take off two here the next minute. Again at 625. Right here. Just because it keeps, it's just, it's struggling. And we're on the other side of this yellow box. I don't know if that could push it back in. And I need to get paid on it something. So it probably came out in there. There, right there, real quick. So let's go ahead and go to the next scale out, which will be at 111. So here is the next scale out. And we'll be taking this off at about... Two lots off at 750, or one lot 775, one lot 750. Um, these two probably should have never came out. Um, so here's the value area high at 1025 exactly. It shot up and it rolled two ticks, three ticks from it. Sometimes that happens and then the trade comes all the way back. So for me, it's like I need to take off a little more because of what just happened. So there you go to come off there. It's still a good trade. And then we're going to run the next clip to 975. So right here. Take off two there. And then finally, the last two go out at 1175. We're overshooting. Again, this gets really close to the top edge of this yellow box, which is another setup in itself. There's the bonus. It's slamming. I'm waiting for it to push. And then we uh, we may have, may have hit the flat key to get out. So I believe, yes, it is out because I remember it nosing and then we cut it right here. You didn't really see it because I think I hit the flat key. But let's just... Kind of recap everything again. Again, a major composite could never really break the value zone and sustain a breakout. A smaller profile up here. It should be getting in this and crossing all the way to the other side of the profile. And it failed five fucking times on the upside. So therefore, the expected value was high. We're breaking a composite after nine, 10 days or some shit like that. So you have this higher time frame, bigger picture setup. Oomph. That's pushing the trade. Should not be on the short side of that. 
And now we're getting into a smaller setup, which again, that smaller setup was flanked by a different setup, this yellow box, which sort of, you know, uh, kind of had some overlay. Uh, you can barely see the fucking pink line, but there's the pink line there. And that's why we squeeze it a little bit more. And again, getting into the entry, there was absolutely no fucking volatility. And taking paper cuts is kind of senseless. Especially on a setup that is that fucking prime. And that is the one, the only trade in my life so far where I was confident that I should have scaled up 20 lots but don't have the balls yet. So hopefully sometime this year you'll see me really push size and finally make that fucking $10,000 day uh, that I've been striving for so bad for forever. If not done it, I actually did do it the other day. I was up 11K, but uh, half the position came out and I closed. <laughs> I closed uh, at 6,900 after commissions. Uh, really, I closed 8,000 net, but uh, the commissions, there was just so many trades. So I did achieve the goal, but it all slipped through my fucking fingers like sand. Um, so quite a bit of growth on my end. Very insane year uh, for my trading. And I, I'm really understanding what an A-plus setup is. And I'm really kind of transitioning from a scalper to somebody that's able to hit these fatter rips on a more consistent basis. And uh, it's just, there's a lot of evolution going on here with Uncle Fat Cat. So guys, if you did like that video, you did learn from it. I do, please consider donating to my coffee as a thank you, a tip. I would appreciate that. Uh, and also... Guys, uh, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, that would mean the world to me. So we will see you in the next video.